Hi everyone, it's Judy Warner. Welcome back to the On Track Podcast. Today we have John Watson from Altium, who is a customer success manager responsible for helping our customers with Altium Designer, particularly as it's related to the integration of Altium 365. But John comes with over 40 years in electronics industry, has 22 years in printed circuit board design, and uh, more than five years at Legrand, where he was um, overseeing a large design team of 65 designers. Today, we're going to talk about data management, why it's important to everyone, not just big design teams, and tell you about a webinar he recorded recently, where I hope you can learn and have a lot of great takeaways. So lean in, enjoy this conversation with John Watson. Welcome to Altium's On Track Podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social media. Well, hey, John. So Hello. fun to call you a coworker now. We were buds through your time at Legrand, and it's it's yes. good to see. And it's fun to have you on our team, and fun to talk to you about your favorite subject, mm -hmm. uh, which is data management. Yes, well, it's a pleasure to be back with you, and uh, it's uh, great to uh, be a part of the team. Well. John, you and I have talked many times about data management, and I know that's something you work with um, here at Altim, but something you worked with a large team integrating a really tight data management system while you were at Legrand, yeah. you know, across, you know, a global organization. So I thought you were just the guy to talk to. So let's just jump right in, and mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a big loaded question, um, which is, what is data management? Data management is anything that ties information of, of, I mean, the simple answer would be data management is the management of data. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate to, I hate to pull that one out on you, but, um, but really it's, it's all the information that's involved from start to finish on a PCB design. And the, all the information and the data that's required to conduct that design and also then ultimately build your board and everything else after that. So give us some data management is sort of a, a, a big subject. And, yeah. you know, what you teach me or you've taught me in the past is that there's many stakeholders that touch that data. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not just important to you. So we know, say your mechanical engineer will yeah. want to know about that data. Who else in the process is going to want to know that that's good data and they can depend on it for their particular jobs? Yeah. I, if, if you look at the, the beginning process, number one is components. Uh, that's your, the beginning of your de entire design process uh, is that component that you're bringing in. Now, if you, if you look at that component and you break it down into its parts, into its symbol, uh, into its, uh, well, there's going to be two sides of that component. There's going to be the information side, and then there's going to be the model side. Um, in the information side, you're going to have such, inf uh, you're going to have like a name, description, uh, the parametric information, and then sourcing. And then on the other side is your models. Now, every piece of this uh, footprint, uh, I'm sorry, every single piece of this component is needed somewhere in the design process. Um, for example, it, as you mentioned, the mechanical engineer, well, what's he concerned about? Well, he's concerned about the 3D model. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about looking at the, uh, the physical parts of this component, making sure that it's put on the board and that uh, the case that he may be designing isn't going to interfere with anything, things like that. Now, that's his side of it. That's his information. Now, uh, it brings up a great point is, is if you don't include that information, what happens? Well, you're going to slow down the process, number one. 
But um, in other areas, you're, you may have some other, every piece of this component is used somewhere. And I can, you can actually walk through, through this. Um, and it's really fascinating because, you know, for example, your part choices that you put into your component, well, that goes over to procurement. That right. goes over to whoever's purchasing your components. You then have parameter information, which is used by engineers and different things like that to make sure they've got the right part on the board. Um, they've got the schematic symbol then, of course, which goes into your schematic. Um, so uh, there's different pieces of this. And it's important that every piece, number one, is of the best quality possible. So um, because if you start off with the bad component, your design is going to be bad. There's no way of recovering from that. And a lot of times this is information that is, you know, this sort of data is pushed through the process and it's not confirmed. Uh, and it, then it ends up on boards, which is really embarrassing. So again, well, it's a very important subject. Uh, yeah. Uh, and which is why I wanted to have you on. So yeah. some time ago, um, I did a, a, a podcast with Ben Jordan and mm -hmm. he was teaching me that even if you're a designer just working by yourself as a design consultant, or if there's two of you or three of you, I think mm -hmm. there's sort of this myth that data management is only for big design teams, like the one you managed yeah. at um, Legrand. But what you're saying here is, it's important no matter what size you are. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not about the size of the team. It's about the design process itself. It's okay. about the, it's about the individual roles that occur. Now, if you've got two or three people on your team, uh, you're still, you're still conducting the same PCB design process as you kind of walk through it. And each, each one of those steps is, is not an individual now doing like a specific task. It's more of an individual doing multiple tasks, but it's still, it's still a role. It's not a role as a person. It's a role as a task. And it's important to understand that at that point of the design process, then it's, that's where you kind of change hats, we'll say, and you then step in and now you're, you're running a different role in the design process, but, and you still need that same data. Uh, whatever that data is that you now have to pull out is, is you, where you drop it in the process and you begin to use it. Now mm -hmm. um, that, that doesn't, that's not based on team size or anything else. Your design process is what dictates the, the information you're going to be needing. So. And that is accurate. I know, from where I sit, John, I did a, um, you know, talking to manufacturers, right? Even if, mm -hmm. if you're a single person laying out boards, you're still, that's still going to end up absolutely in the hand of some mechanical right. designer somewhere. And it's going to end up in, in a EMS company or an assembler that's going to mm -hmm. have to interpret. Right what that means. Right. right. Um, yes, exactly. and so there's still multiple people involved, but I think what I hear you saying too, is that it's good for you to, to really think about this in a process. Yeah. Right. And it's, that it's you're about... checking boxes throughout that process to make sure right. whatever you output at the end of the day, everybody gets your design intent and it's right. accurate. And yeah, and you, you might be, it might be surprising to people that it's even if you're a small team, the, the group that is involved to actually produce a board from start to finish uh, involves both an internal group, which may be small, but it also in group in in involves maybe even hundreds of people externally to mm -hmm. your company. All right. Now yep. we're talking about fab houses. We're talking about assembly houses. We're talking about yep. procurement. We're, you know, uh, purchasers, different things like this. So, I mean, it's, it's easy to say, yeah, I've got a small team. There's three of us or whatever it is. We don't need it, this information, but you got to look at the bigger picture of the entire design process of actually designing the board, getting it fabricated, getting it assembled and getting it back to you sitting on your desk and, and working. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not something you want to look at and, and kind of dismiss 
the importance of uh, peace and, you know, the data management just because you're small. Yeah. Well, I know that you recently did uh, a webinar here um, mm -hmm. for, for all team users and you did this sort of in a two part series. One was, you know, it's like you're the professor John Watson on data management. You, mm -hmm. you teach them not only the why, which is what we're talking about, but the actual how. So I wanted to yeah. make sure that I'm going to share that with um, our listeners and viewers, but also you have a Q and a session, you give people homework and yeah. So um, I just want to let our listeners and viewers know, I definitely will share that with you. So you can go a little bit deeper in that, like, great, I need to do it now. How? Uh, yeah. So I'll make sure that I share that. But you, we were, when we were discussing that, you told me an alarming number as you were preparing for that webinar, that mm -hmm. you did sort of an audit, yeah. um, particularly with Octopark. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, so I was, um, uh, Octopart is a really great site. If you're not familiar with it, it's octopart.com. And, uh, it's a really good source of information, uh, for components. And so I was just kind of browsing around and looking and I kind of pulled out my calculator and started calculating up, you know, adding up the categories when I was looking at components and different things like that. And I just started totaling those up and you'd be surprised that, we actually, I actually ended up with 15 point, I'll actually give you the real number, 15,163,268 uh, components. All right, so it, it, we'll round it off. So these are part numbers, like these, these manufacturer are, part numbers. These are unique components um, that will, these are the electronic components that would go on a board. 15.1 uh, million components that are, are just in Octopart alone. All right. So it's, that is where you begin. That is where everything begins in your design. And think about, uh, and let me give you a scenario. You're sitting in the, the middle of a gym floor uh, in um, you're sitting on the floor in the middle of a gymnasium and a tr dump truck pulls up in the back and the doors fly open and the dump truck pours out 15.1 million components onto the floor. All right. So it would be like a scene from speed, the movie with Keanu Reeves, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, the pop quiz. What do you do? What do, you do? You know? um, it, it's, it, that's where you begin. And it's important to understand that with these 15.1, 15.1 million components, it, that's where everything begins. I would just be overwhelmed and quit. Just <laughs> it, yeah. that's where I would just like drop and the mic and walk away. <laughs> like, I don't know how any electronic devices ever made with that kind of overwhelm of data. Yeah. So, okay. There's that many, where do you start? How do you keep that organized? How do you keep it accurate? And it is a proverbial case of eating the elephant. All right. You have to eat the elephant. And a lot of times, as you said, you know, it would just be overwhelming. Everyone's looking at the, yeah. the you know, you're looking at a pile of components and it would just be like, my goodness, where do I even begin here? Yeah. Um, and what is important to understand is, it, you know, we've all heard the riddle is, is how do you eat the elephant? Well, one bite at a time. Right. Don't look at the pile. Don't look at how, ex, you know, look at, um, don't look at how, ex, um, how huge the task is, but just look at your next step. That's all you look at. What is your next step? And uh, getting your head wrapped around the components, understanding them. And this is where I, I, what the entire discussion was around the webinar that I did was how do you do it? How, how do you even start to do this? And how do you get this organized in a way where you, you can be assured that it's correct? Mm -hmm. because, because these are components are the raw resources and materials that we use mm -hmm. as P des PCB designers to create right. some of the innovations that you're seeing today. And if they're wrong, your components, your, your PCB designs are also going to be wrong. So uh, this is actually, I, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, as far as a teaser to, out there to you guys, uh, check out the webinar. And um, this is a really vital question because I mean, 
Judy, as you mentioned, I see it. How do you even wrap your head around this? Well, luckily, sites like Octopart and manufacturers and distributors sort of sort those 15.1 million parts out by, Bingo. you know, sensors, semiconductor, you know, uh -huh. how, right. you know, passes. So they, they sort that out for us, luckily. Yep. Um, so there's your first step. That's your, okay. first, that's your first bite of the elephant. Is, okay. Is you get your organization down to understand your categories. There's three levels. There's three levels to the process here. There's categories of components. There's family as, families of components. And then those families even will break down further into subfamilies, some of them. Okay. Right? So those, the, uh, understanding what, what, uh, what a component is, where it belongs, okay? Uh, you know, Ben Franklin is the one who said that everything has its place, all right? And that's mm -hmm. so true here is that when you look at a component, you're looking at a component, but then you're also understanding, okay, now where does this belong? Right. Where, wh where does this live? And understanding the breakdown uh, and then you can understand, and then you can separate. And then now what you can do is begin to structure a good library from that. Uh, and that's where we actually want to end up is structuring a great library. Right. Um, we were a, kind of my place in the world. I, I have a sense of it, but I'd like to hear it from your perspective, mm -hmm. from the scope of your your experience, what does it cost if, if design engineers do it badly and what's the benefits if they do it right? Well, it's, it's actually the, I mean, if you look at it, what happens when you do it badly, it is, I mean, what, when things go badly, it could be endless. It could go on for, you know, I mean, there's endless, things that can happen when things go badly. But uh, some of the major things that will stick out is number one is a uh, loss, a uh, loss revenue. I mean, you're now, if you have to go in and you have a bad board and um, you you're assuming, and that's, a, that's the problem is that there's a lot of assumptions that are done when you say, Oh no, it's, it's fine. We we're good. You know? Uh, and it, uh, when, when assumptions are made, that kind of opens you up to a, pretty high risk mm. of, of having problems, number right. one. So with those problems then is you, you may have the situation where you're assuming, oh, my board's great, everything's good, everything, you know, um, and you pass it over to your fab. There's not going to be too much problem with the fab. The fab does what the fab does, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then you, the real problems are going to start hitting with the assembly. Right. All right. Then you have, then you start getting the phone calls from the assembly house saying, uh, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> we can't put this component on your board. We, you have a wrong footprint on your board or design. Now, there was recently several surveys that I read regarding what are the, what is some of the things that are the, the biggest struggles for the design, you know, for designers right now. Mm -hmm. And they actually said that part of the, one of the things was getting their footprints right. Um, mm. and, and, and getting bad footprints on designs. Now, what this does is it impacts your entire design because what happens is if, it depends how critical it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you could have the situation where you're now just created, you just did a fabrication of a design and it's got to be thrown away. Um, is you got to start over or you got to fix the problems, go back, fix the problems and recreate new Gerbers and all this process. So now you're talking about lost revenue, paying for the fabrication, mm -hmm. right? Probably part of the assembly, mm -hmm. um, you know, paying for that. But most importantly is you're, you're talking about lost time. You're talking about lost mm -hmm. time, especially for a company if yeah. they're looking at from time to market and they're looking at getting right. a product out to a customer or, or getting a, pro a new product line out. Um, this is vital. These are things that can't be measured with, with the, with the, you know, normal bookkeeping methods. We'll say. Right. Um, these are things that are, I mean, how do you put a price on lost market share? Uh, because your competitor put out their product sooner because they actually followed a process. 
Right. Um, also, the other thing is sometimes what happens is you may have still have problems in your designs. If you have poor data management in your design process and, and, and starting with those components, you're, you're not watching them correctly or not managing them correctly. What will happen is you may have, you may be able to conduct the design. You may be able to do the fabrication, get the assembly, get it out there, but there may still be problems on that design that are, are unknown. Right. So now what will happen is you have a less quality design that you're giving to your customer, which will ultimately end up maybe somewhere, you know, some period yeah. down the road Field will, failure. will fail. All right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's even worse. All right. Yeah. Now you're talking about embarrassment in front of the company. Yeah. And today, I mean, uh, with all the, I mean, with all the uh, is, uh, massive information that's spread across, I mean, you, so you have something like that. Now you get the bad reputation of not being, re being a good company of reliability for your product. Now, th these are cool. just, mm -hmm. just a few of the bad things that can happen. Well, and wonder if that's going in a jet or a car, mm -hmm. you know, you know, there it's, it's important. Yeah. I worked for an EMS company on the East coast in Baltimore called Zentech. They, they were very heavy in the military sector. And I remember when I was interviewing them and I was walking through and I was so impressed, like it was such tight process controls and like, I was really, really impressed. And I said, my gosh, you know, what drives you? to, to keep your processes so tight. And of course it's military. So it's sort of self-evident, mm -hmm. but the, the, um, production manager said to me, well, because they're sons of mothers mm -hmm. lives at stake here. And we never forget that. And so I'm like, wow, that's taking the camera way back, but that's how important it can be. So depending on, you know, if you're making an IOT device, it, you're not you're not looking at risking life and limb, but in some cases you are. Yeah, yes, <clears throat> and it may are. just be reputation of customer. You know, I just think there's a lot more writing on it. It's like yes. those unintended consequences, right? Or those yeah. hidden cost. Um, and sometimes I think we just it's not always evident. I would yeah, say at it, first glance, and this is what you've taught me. Yeah, we, we've got, you have companies that do not look at their products. Or they'll say, you know, well, it's not a medical device. It's not a defense contract. Right. It's, it's just an IoT device or it's just this or that. I, I think it's, it's the value that you put into your product and what you do as a PCB designer. I mean, I'm talking, I talk to PCB de uh, designers all the time. And one of the things that I, I try to instill in them is to say, look, the value that you put into your your product doesn't matter what it is. All right. right. It, it doesn't matter if it's a singing Christmas card that, that <laughs> uses a little switch and electronic little put the best quality that you can into it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at your product, uh, what you do as the level that, as you had mentioned about the defense uh, defense contracts or medical contracts, mm -hmm. if you looked at that in the same level your company would be so better off um, as, a, as a company to understand and you'll have put out better product. Well, okay. and we all know that it's, it's sort of like design engineer. It's, it's it, your job's on the line. <laughs> the, you're, yeah. If you're working for a company or even if you run a design bureau consultancy, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're, your ability to make a living's actually at stake beyond right. all the larger things. Anyways, I think we just sort of lose sight of how really, really important it is. Yeah. Um, not to mention all the big creepy headaches of yeah. the back and forth and the phone calls and emails and right. yada, yada, yada. I, I'm, so, I'm of the opinion. I, I'm, I'm just too old for the stress anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just I prefer to do it correctly the right the right the first time get it done and and make sure it's correct and um and that that's a, a big process though so I mean um I mean this whole area of data management is like eating the elephant and taking them one bite at a time say okay now what am I what's my next step what's my next step what's my next step and what? yeah so 
Um, yeah, so th basically, let's do it right the first time. I think a lot of times, I, I've been, I think a lot of times, good designs are sacrificed on the altar of expediency. Um, oh, I like the way you said that. Say that okay. again. Um, good designs are sacrificed on the altar of expediency um, mm. because they're, they're in such a rush to get it done and they don't have time to check things and make sure they're correct and make sure they're right. And it's amazing that we have time to do things again, but we don't have time to do it the right the first time. And yeah, so we, we kind of sacrifice those designs, uh, hoping that they get through, hoping they slide in there. <laughs> you know, so um, if you put the right process in place, the right measures in place, and, and believe me, this is, this is something I, I dive into every single day, uh, processes and how do you make sure that things are correct and make, how, are set up correctly and the process that you walk through and kind of examining that and re-examining that and making sure that it is the best is, is um, kind of like what a lot of what I do right now. So makes me think of one of my favorite sayings by John Wooden, a UCLA mm -hmm. famous coach of UCLA. He says, um, be quick, but don't hurry. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, that kind of thing, because why? Because when you hurry the expediency piece, you make mistakes. Exactly. So you want to be fast and scrappy, yeah. um, you know, and I always say, slow down to hurry up. Yeah. I like that one too, because you, you will hurry up, you know, by doing it first, right. The first time I had a, a podcast with Chris Denny of Worthington assembly. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, he, uh, in fact, I'll share that in the show notes too. you know, five things that your EMS provider wish you knew the number one thing, John yeah. is footprint orientation. He uh -huh. said al almost every job mm -hmm. that comes in there, they have to make calls right. saying where's pin one or, this way or that way. And so it slows every job down Yep. just for that one little piece of the puzzle. So, um, but what is, I mean, you're talking about a, 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 pit, a, a footprint, a pin one identifying information on a footprint, especially when you're talking about symmetrical. Mm -hmm, yeah. And identifying pin one, that is PCB data management. That is PCB data that is needed in the design process, in the assembly process, ultimately, okay, to understand, okay, am I doing this correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it's important to identify that information and understand the, that that component when that, uh, that you, when you first create it, are, are all the pieces there? Right. Is everything and rotation there? of parts, I'm telling you, happens mm -hmm. hundreds of times a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's like, what a waste of time, energy, phone calls, right. emails. Right. Um, you know, lately, John, a lot of people have been talking about when we first did our pod, one of our podcasts a couple of years ago, yeah. when you were still at Legrand, we were in the middle of a um, component shortage and mm -hmm. surprise, here we are again. And this time, not just passives, um, yeah. we're also in trouble with semiconductors. So right. on top of just, okay, let's say you did awesome. You had a good type process. You're doing great with mm -hmm. your data management, but then you face things like unknowns, like part obsolescence, part shortages, like yeah. how does a design engineer try to stay ahead of that Right. when there's 15 million manufacturers parts and their availability is changing all the time? Like, what do you do yeah. with that? This is where you've gone. This is where you've crossed the line into uh, the, what I would say, the jello zone. <laughs> this is where you're, I mean, there, there's information in a component. You have a component that is broken down by category, family, or subfamily, and it's broken down into two, two parts. It's information and models. And this is all part of the webinar. 
Um, and a part of that information is I information side of a component is the part choices you're going to make. Now that's where that information is dynamic. That is constantly changing. Um, that's, that's the first problem and issue. Now you're trying to take a static process and use dynamic information, which is constantly changing. So w you can actually sit down and design a board and everything else. And then that section of part choices that you're making on that design, which is dynamic, can constantly be changing. Uh, it's, it's, it's now in the situation where it's, um, especially when you get into the area of uh, component shortages, now you're getting into some, some it, 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 things are made worse. I'll say it this way. Mm -hmm. Things are made a lot worse by companies. Number one is if they are on contract with a part provider, they get first dibs uh, on components. So the smaller companies, they kind of get the scraps that fall from the table, right. we'll say. <laughs> um, but the... Um, they get first dibs. And a lot of times because they, they know there's a part shortage problem. Now they're ordering two or three times more they, yeah. they need and they're hoarding the components. Okay. Basically. Mm -hmm. So, but this, this is a really, this situation though, what we're seeing right now is I think a result of, of a lot of it came through the pandemic. All right. The yeah, COVID, for sure. The COVID camp pandemic. I think what we're seeing now and what happened was it, it impacted not just the, the manufacturers, but it also, this was so severe that it impacted the, the mining and the, the development of the raw materials. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard right? that. That's crazy. Yeah. So that it, it actually, it went down deeper because it actually impacted per getting the raw materials. Mm -hmm. to but that we are seeing such a, the, the main industry that's really driving this whole is the, the car industry, autonomous vehicles right yes. now, which is really huge. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, I mean, a normal vehicle will have 2000 components and, and 2000 capacitors. Well, autonomous vehicles has, I think they estimate around 22,000 to 25,000 per car. Uh, so th this is really causing impacts on the entire uh, supply chain. There's mm -hmm. also, issues now with ICs and different things like that. Now, yeah. so in your design process, how, what you need to do is be proactive, very, very proactive. And don't assume that because you, you laid a component down on your board uh, that it's still available. So at periodic, at periodic times, uh, for example, um, there are stages of your design process. What you want to do is make sure to check your design. Um, so at your schematic, when you get your schematic finished, you want to go ahead and, and run that through like an active bomb. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, see what your, see what your report looks like. Uh, see what your part availability is, is occurring. Now you'll, you'll get, may get some red flags there that says this is components not recommended for, for new designs. Um, or it could even be further down the deprecation of saying it's obsolete. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are components you want to handle on that level. Um, I've actually seen it where I, when I ran that report, I take that report over to the engineer and, and he'd look at it and go, oh, no, 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 nothing to worry about here. Uh, no, we can find those components. Uh, um, you know, I, I have, I have, after working with Altium, not just in internally, but externally now I've, I've had the, I, I, I kind of follow a simple rule. Uh, trust the information that's being given to me. Uh, and one of those reports that I get from Active Bomb would be that it gives you a list of uh, components that are deprecating or they're not recommended for new designs. And yeah. So uh, let me explain a lot of times how that happens is that, you know, a lot of people go to DigiKey, for example, or, or, or Octopart and they'll say, oh, look, there's components. Well, there's something, Altium has an algorithm that they will actually run and they check not just the in, um, present suppliers, but they also look at the forecast of, of purchases and things like that, that will affect the component oh, interesting. down the road. So I, I've gotten into the habit is say, okay, I trust this information at some point in, in, 
usually what, what occurred was probably within six months um, that you could actually then say, well, that part's now obsolete. So it, it's, it's very, very consistent. So um, mm -hmm. trust the information that's been given to you with, with active bomb, especially. So that's one of your biggest tools that you've got is to, to understand that. Now we do have some other things, other sources. Um, there's, there's some great tools. If you're familiar with, um, a365, Altium 365, there's some mm -hmm. additional tools that we've now got available with those, those uh, packages, uh, such as IHS uh, supply information, things like that. These are all things that you have to implement. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's, it's great when there's no sh component shortages and you can just run smoothly, you know, just run. But right. Um, in, in the tough times, that's when you kind of have to take the steps, extra steps to say, okay, I got to double check my work here and make right. sure. So, so pay you, more attention, not less attention. Yes, absolutely. And I, I would just constantly keep doing that. And you want to do that at, at every stage of your process. I mean, check, go back to ActiveBomb, check it again, check it again, check, check ActiveBomb. Has anything been put on the list? What is my what is my present availability? So that that's where you're kind of uh, trying to nail the jello against the wall. I mean, basically, <laughs> um, that's why I call it the jello zone is that it, it's so difficult because you have to have the information to make good decisions. So. All right. Yeah. Well, John, I know you're a busy guy and I need to let you go, but thanks so much for sharing this. And uh, I'll make sure to share that webinar with our listeners and. Um, Thanks so much for sharing your wisdom. I know you've, you've got all the bruises and the wisdom, you know, the, the school, I know you've gone to the school, you got a PhD in the school of hard knocks. So yeah. Um, thanks for, for bringing your, your know-how and your wisdom, not only to the on track listeners, but also to Altium and, and, and in the form of things like this webinar. So thanks for joining today. It's yeah. always good to see you, my friend. And um, well, yes, same here. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to uh, if anybody has any questions or they want to continue this conversation, feel free to get in contact with me. I'd love to talk to you about it. That's john.watson at allteam.com. And also, yes. um, you'd mentioned earlier, John, the footprint. There was just an issue. I think it was in Design 007. There, mm -hmm. and, and John writes an article for that magazine. Um, and they just had an issue on footprints. So I also will share that because uh, there's multiple articles from a lot of different people talking about footprints. So I'll make yeah. sure I share that in the show notes Great. too. So oh, yeah. continued Excellent. success on the column and, and all that you're teaching design engineers is wonderful information. Well, thank you very much, Judy, for having me. Appreciate to our listeners, thanks so much for joining myself and John Watson today. I hope you enjoyed this information. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps us to grow our subscriber base to continue giving you great information and people like John. And also make sure you go to the show notes. All the good stuff is down there. So appreciate you joining us today. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and always remember to stay on track.